Now on Radio 4, the writer, actor and comedian Mark Gatiss showcases all of his talents in our Saturday play as the members of an exclusive club embark upon a brand new venture. Murder Every Monday by Pamela Branch Dramatised for radio by Mark Gatiss Clifford Flush had murdered nobody since 1939. For 15 uneasy years after his controversial acquittal, he tried to persuade himself that the tiger in him was fully tamed. And then came Armitage. Um... Um... Get on with it, Armitage. Um... Uh, one, uh, no, two clubs. You can't bid two clubs. You've got to make that good. Oh, yes. <sighs> Unable to endure the man's pleasant smile and cautious bridge game for another moment, Flush was overcome by an irresistible urge and pushed him under a bus in Piccadilly. Flush, old boy. That incident the other day. You shouldn't have done that. Well, I've apologised, haven't I? I bought you a new hat. That my trilby alone was flattened was something of a miracle. I think, old boy, that perhaps you need a change. A change? Somewhere right away. A spell in the country. Nothing like it. I really must insist. Are you threatening me, Armitage? Matter of fact, I am, old man. Flush took his problem home to the residential club in Chelsea, which he was the founder. They called themselves the Asterisk Club, and as a sanctuary for those with similar histories to his own, that is to say, let's not be coy, wrongly acquitted killers, it had proved an immediate success. He informed Mrs. Barrett, Colonel Quincy, and the dreadful lump of flesh known as the Creaker, of recent unfortunate events. So, there we have it. I pushed him into the path of a number 19 to Finsbury Park, but he rolled under a bubble car and managed to save himself. Oh, oh to think that you, Clifford, of all people, should be threatened by a gentleman too timid to bid a slam. Mm, blighter. Asked for it. Got it. Sauce. Country, eh? Sheep and that. It grieves me more than I can say to have to leave our little establishment. However, I intend to put into operation a scheme which I've been considering for us for some years. Us? Mm -hmm. Us, Naomi. In the country? I have no choice, Colonel. Armitage is a man of his word. I do not wish, after all these years of retirement, to be reported to the police as an unsuccessful assassin. Are you with me? Can I count upon you? Of course. Creaker? Yes. Colonel? Tikai. My friends, I have decided we shall become homicide consultants. Meanwhile, in another part of town altogether... All right, let's have another go. Take three. That's quite enough of that, you young vixen, bellowed Lord Courtley, fixing her with a stare from his glittering grey-green eyes that glittered like the sea. I love thee, ye damned villain, she hissed, crimson lips curling. His eyes rolled down her velvet dress as she... Sounds a bit grisly, Mrs Carlyle. Sorry, what? His eyes rolled down her velvet dress... Conjures up gory eyeballs in motion over purple plush. Can we say, uh, his gaze devoured? If you like. I don't want to tamper with your immortal prose. No, 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 do what you like. My readers never notice, so I'm sure my listeners won't either. Is it luncheon yet, darling? Um, we've just got to get through the ravishing and the manor house burning down and then we can nip down to Simpsons, all right? I'm very hoarse. Could you bring me something to wet my whistle? Uh, hang on. I'll be right in. Oh. Here you are. Thanks. Mm. Is it too early for sherry? I fear so. 
Is the microphone off? I depressed it specially. Darling. No. Darling. 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 Oh. Mm. I thought you'd never go away. Mm. 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 One weekend in Helsinki hardly gets him out of our hair. Of course, mm. there is another way. Mm. No, 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 not that again. You know it makes sense, Chloe. I know, I know, it's just... The... Murder? Well, that's what it would be. Yes, yes, all right, murder. Well, it just seems so... Final. Not much point unless it is. God, so I wouldn't wish to start. We'll discuss it tonight. I'd better get back or people will talk. Oh, <laughs> oh hang people. That's just the trouble, darling. They do. Got to be in the wilds. Somewhere really inconvenient. We don't want to attract the frivolous. Yeah, yeah horrible grub. Perhaps unlicensed? Yeah. No, madam. Going too far. It's essential to achieve real discomfort. Yeah, yeah. Clifford wants no fellow travellers. Yes. Where is he, then? Down in the country. Apparently, he's got his eye on somewhere rather promising. <laughs> in service at Gantley Manor since the time of Blaisdell, sir. I was privileged to serve the late Earl until his unfortunate demise since when I've acted as caretaker. I see. And you'd be prepared to return to your old role as um, butler? Well, sir, I don't really think the manor will be what you're looking for, sir. I'll be the judge of that, Paget. May I ask you, sir, why you are interested in the manor? I intend to found a small country club. That would be a grievous error, sir. Disastrous. Ah. As you can see, sir, Gankry Manor is of many periods, all warring, but none, alas, victorious. Ah. The distemper has conquered the lichen. The swimming pool is virtually a swamp. And there's an irregular stain on the floor of the bedroom in the east wing, which centuries of treatment has failed to remove. Is it not disgusting? It is ideal. And so, contracts were exchanged, dusty keys procured, and the Asterisk Club took up residence in the horrible old manor. Twenty-five courses of homicide consultancy followed, all fairly uneventful until the following summer when the heat was as stifling as a strangler's hands around the throat. They don't run to Orange Pico. What? Uh, the buffet. I got some of that chicory coffee. No thanks. How many words have I written, Cyril, darling? In your lifetime. In this damn book. <gasps> Oh, about um, 80,000 for the guest. You can tell by weighing it. Lord, yes. Literature, midget gems, all the same. Not enough, not nearly enough. All right. As the sun exploded into a thousand million crimson rays over the melting Pacific, Lady Devonish donned her costly negligee and... She was wearing jodhpurs on page 109. Do you think I don't know that? Jasper's eyes changed colour last week and Lord Pevsner went from being minister without portfolio... Do shut up. Sorry, Chloe. You don't want me to say... Darling, you know how I value your opinion. I mean, better by far than that ruddy eight-year-old who actually gets paid to edit me. Oh, Lady Devonish donned her costly negligee, having torn off her damn fool jodhpurs. There. Satisfied? Mm -hmm. Now then, Terence has got to go. Um, hunting accident? I thought a plane crash. Oh, yes, you're good at them. Speaking of persons having to go... What do you mean? Ned is what I mean, Chloe. Your husband is what I mean. Cyril, 
I've got remorse. <gasps> Let's have a sandwich at Poxwell Regis and go straight back. No, it's too late for that. Oh. Give me a cigarette. Cyril, do you love me enough? Darling, you know I do. Light? Thanks. Oh, you dropped your checkbook. Darling. <clears throat> Don't mind if I sit in here. Oh. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Very kind of you, I'm sure. <laughs> oh. I'm Mrs. Carlyle, and this is Mr. Cyril Revere. Uh-huh. Going far? Uh, uh. Crunt Abbas. I see. I'm so sorry I didn't catch your name. Yeah, that's right, lady. The management regrets to announce the demise of Piers Larsen. Suddenly, at his residence in Sweden, shortly after Mrs. Larson's departure from these premises. B+. Plus. Excellent. Top of the class. <sighs> oh, Clifford, what's the matter? Oh, I don't know, Naomi. I just feel a little out of sorts. Perhaps it's the heat. I expect so. Have you sent Miss Parrish to the station? Yes. The new batch should be arriving any time now. Um, excuse me, miss. Do you happen to know where I can find a taxi? Oh. There aren't any. Where are you going? Uh, the manor. Uh, Dankry Manor. Well, I suppose you never can tell. You're staring. It, it, sorry, uh, it's just... your belt. Skirt. Skirt? Is it? Uh, yes, um... I'm Bill Thurlow. Dina Parrish. I'm the secretary. I've come to pick you all up. Don't say we have to walk. I shall simply scream. Well, I won't give you a fireman's lift. Not after last time. Ah, the new arrivals. You must be Mrs. Carlyle. Yes. And Mr. Revere. Rather. Are you on the staff? Yes. Mm -hmm. Charming little blouse you have there. Charming. And little. And this gentleman? Bill. Bill Thurler. Hello. And this must be Mr. Manelli. Right. So you're heading for... Bankry Manor, yeah. Yeah, well, ain't this nice? Oh, oh. excuse the leg. The genuine article was broken in 29 on the Great North Road. Snapped like a ruddy twig. Gosh. It began to creak, 31 at West Whittering. Sea air got in the joints. Would you pass the water jug? Ladies and gentlemen, could I have your attention, please? <clears throat> I'd like to bid you all a warm welcome to Dankry Manor and what I hope will be another successful course. On my left, Mrs Naomi Barrett, whose graceful hands once ground down two electric light bulbs and beat them briskly into her first husband's Yorkshire pudding. Good evening. By the bar, Colonel Quincy, tried in India for reversing over his wife in a highly powered motor car. More recently, he was obliged to drown an irksome person in the Thames. There were several spectators, but his work was so polished that he was congratulated by the coroner for his intrepid attempt to save the man's life. Yes. Beggar swam like an otter. Pleasure to meet you. We now come to myself. Uh, I do not wish to boast. But... Uh, you, you were the Balliol butcher, weren't you? It pushed three women off trains. Mm. That's right, Mr Thurlow. A method I now realise to be unsatisfactory unless put into operation over a viaduct. Oh. Miss Parrish, on my right... Hello. ...was recently affianced to a certain artist whom she came to distrust. She presented herself at a police station to report the young man missing which smoothed the way to a verdict of suicide. Gosh! Now, I shall interview each of you in the morning regarding your specific cases and your own particular requirements. Hey, what about me? Be quiet, Creaker. Tell him about me! 
The Creaker was tried and sentenced to death in 1937. Yeah. His crime was unattractive. Tell him about the deck chair. Creaker. The windbreak pole and West Whitry. Silence. Now then, Mrs Carlyle. Yes? I have you down for anatomy, firearms, court procedure, jiu-jitsu and alibis. Have you got that? Yes. Mr Revere... Your curriculum is the same, with the addition of manipulative exercises, accidents, electricity, and forging of suicide notes. Mr Manelli? Yeah? You will study firearms, court etiquette, grips, knots, uh, tourniquets and water. Oh. Dear me. It really is warm tonight. Mr Thurlow? Uh, yes? I shall pin your timetable to the notice board... I'm afraid I have rather a headache coming on. Not to worry. I'm going to drift out onto the balcony. Anyone coming? Ah, uh, yes. yes. Cyril. Just a breath of air, darling. No. Like our host, I fear I have a head coming on. Paget, perhaps you'd be good enough to show us to our room. Certainly, madam, this way. Darling, do you think we're safe? Oh, I should think so. I mean, surely this is the last place they'd want any complications. <sighs> Who's there? I must warn you that I'm armed. I have a style concealed in my nightdress. Very well. Hide if you wish, but I shall remain vigilant. Hmm. Patchouli, a Greek. Can he pay in instalments? Uh, we regret usual things. Right oh. What is it? Lined stationery. Uh, oh, could you speak to Paget? I seem to have mislaid a dressing gown. Instruct him to institute a search, would you? Certainly. Hmm. Are you all right, Mr Flush? Uh, just the heat. Perhaps just this once we might divide up the introductory interviews between us all. Cyril and I are in love. So you've said. Moreover, my husband is an intolerable bully. You've no need to justify yourself to me, my dear. Though we always allow an extra half hour for the purpose. Tell me, Mr Revere, do you intend to participate in the venture? Uh, as far as possible. Unfortunately, my heart's not too strong. Wouldn't a divorce be less hazardous? Ned refuses even to consider it. He says I've made my bed and he intends to sleep in it. A familiar tale, believe me. Is he in good health? I'm afraid so. Insured? Oh, yes. The policy should be allowed to lapse. That seems rather a waste. Does your husband have enemies? He is a stockbroker. Both of you can drive? Me and Ned or me and Cyril? You and Cyril? Yes, yeah, but I'm rather nervous, and Cyril has an endorsement for being under the influence. Oh? Of barbiturates. And vodka. Mm. You have your own garage? No, we rent a muse one. A muse? Hmm. Now that has distinct possibilities. Oh my God. I know. The blackguard. Oh, quite. You mean he... Yes. In broad daylight? I'm afraid so. Mr Thurlow, I will deem it a favour if you will entrust this monster to me. He should be dealt with immediately. Uh, no, no it, it's very kind of you, but uh, I promised my father that I'd keep it in the family. I, I thought perhaps I'd shoot him. Too merciful. Allow me to summon the Creaker when he's roused to anger. Uh, no. I appeal to you. It would afford me great pleasure. No, I'm sorry. My father wanted to do it himself, but with his arthritis, he can barely peel a satsuma. Mr Thurlow, 
I insist upon you taking this course free of charge. I insist. So, Mr. Manelli? Mm-hmm. Your reputation precedes you. <laughs> yeah, you, you might say that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Full name? Joe. Profession? I got a florist shop. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put industrial consultant. Hey, I got a florist shop. Yeah, <laughs> come on, sunshine. We're not kiddies, are we? I've seen your form. You got done nine times for killing, 15 times for assault and robbery with menaces, five times grand larceny, 11 times consorting with known crooks. Yeah, but did I get convicted? Uh, nope. You must know all the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> why are you here, Mr. Manelli, with your track record? Hey, I did good, bud. I got successful. You get successful, you get lazy. I need... Oh, uh, a refresher course. Right. Besides, things are getting too hot back in the States. I don't like Ike, you might say. I figured... While the heat is on over there, I could open up some business on this side of the pond. Uh, florists. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that dreadful servant? If I'm to complete this aeroplane crash, I must have gin. If he comes in, I'm not hiding in the bloody wardrobe again. It's ridiculous. But, darling, you're so good at it, you must have had lots of practice. Oh, comb your hair. You look like a case of mistaken identity. Let's go home, Cyril. No. We start lessons tomorrow. I'm rather looking forward to it, going back to school and all that. Yes, but it's hardly gym class and English comp, is it? Those dreadful people. I mean, no murderer is quite sane, are they? Who knows when they might break out? Let's go home. Will you stop saying that? We can't. We've taken this lot on for better or worse. And worse and worse. Ooh. Hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, Jeeves. Gadgets, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I need your advice. I want to, I want to, you know, blend in around here. Look the part. Uh, what do you think? Think, sir? Of my ensemble. A black tie is merely worn with plimsoll, sir. Uh. And certainly not with Bermuda shorts. No? <laughs> not in the better houses. Oh. Hmm. <clears throat> hey, uh, Flush. Hmm? Says you used to work here back in the day, yeah? Yes, sir. For the old earl, sir. Uh. We had some wonderful times at the manor. Happy times. So, uh... How comes you're working here again, huh? And what are your uh, qualifications, Mr. Paget? I love this house, sir. I was very pleased to accept Mr. Flush's offer to come back and bottle. Ah. And, um, that's all? That's all. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir. <laughs> Hello. Mind if I join you? It's a free pool. <clears throat> You're staring again. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's just lovely costume. <laughs> this old thing? Oh, it's nothing. Quite. You'd better get your togs off. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, then. I say, what Fush said about your fiancé and, and the cliff, it, it's not true, is it? I mean, you're not like them. Darling boy. I won't believe it. You don't belong here, Dina. Really? Don't I? Where else would I go? Let's not talk about that now. I prefer it on my back. How about you? What? Swimming. How about you? Oh, um, well, uh, breast, um, breast stroke. <laughs> <sighs> uh, 
what is the general view on the rest of the students? I'm not altogether happy about Mrs Carlyle. Not sure her heart's in it. And her young man? Oh, Cyril invited me to go to the movies. He asked me not to tell Mrs Carlyle. I presume that it is the husband who is to go? Yes, it should be quite simple. I have a plan of his garage. I think the puncture and faucet routine will meet the case. As an alternative, Colonel, I suggest you take them quickly through firearms. Teak high. Miss Minnelli also sit. Oh? Brought with him deplorable thorn off shotgun. Frightening state neglect. Who's he after? <laughs> He's not selected as intended. Makes enemies on a large and rapid scale. <laughs> he wants a brush up. Oh. Clifford, what's the matter? Oh, uh, this damned heat. Oh, that's not all, is it? No. Uh, I want everyone to keep on their toes. I don't like this batch. I don't like them at all. <gasps> Who's there? I warn you, I have a Walter P-38 in my directoires. Right. I'm coming out. Clifford! You, you can't be that. Arts, spades... Keep walking. Dear me. Come on. Let's get you back to bed. Attention, please. Electricity. Much neglected, domestic, universal, still baffles Einstein. Consider breakfast. Uh, I just ate. Electric kettles, toasters, cookers, moist switches. But remember, intended may be revived up to four hours. After your experiment. Now, Mr Thurlow. Uh, yes? Pass me that reading lamp, sir. Uh, but I'm, I'm not earthed. Gula, gula, capital. See the danger? Always earth self. Gumboots and lockers. Please put them on. Now, gentlemen, we shall go outside and consider dynamos and lightning. I said the carotids, Mrs Carlyle. First and second finger on the jugular, thumb on the internal jugular... Small finger on the subclavian. No, oh, I'll never get the hang of it. Besides, Flush said it would involve Ned's Muse garage and a length of tubing. Always best to be prepared. Like the Boy Scouts, Chloe. Isn't that right, Miss Parrish? That's right. Were you one, Cyril? Oh, rather. Forever bobber-jobbing. I'll help anybody out me if they ask nicely. <laughs> no! How's this? <laughs> hmm? How's this? <coughs> Excellent. <coughs> Oof. Splendid, Mrs. Carlyle. That would have choked a gorilla. <laughs> Curare is no longer ludicrous. We must never forget that once a poison is used by the medical profession as an anaesthetic, we too can take it seriously. Now tell me, what do you know of your subject? Well, uh, I knows uh, most of uh, narcotics I is familiar with. Uh, chloroform, ether, opium, chloral, henbane. Good. No. Mountain ash, uh, monk's hood, hemlock. You, mercury, antimony, digitalis. Thank you. Trional, strychnine. Thank you, Mr. Minnelli. Top of the class. But let us start right on our own doorstep. Would you please write down tinned meat, shellfish and sausages? Be relieved when this course is over. Troublemakers, this lot. A chota peg? No, thank you. D never saw so many yellow streaks. Herd of zebras. Don't like it. Yes. Bit windy, self. Take Clifford. I know. He's sleepwalking again. Commander slacks. Troops play up. Mutiny. Bloodshed. Pity. But what can we do? Only one thing can do. Preventative measures. Make an example of the sea boys. Between ourselves, I sometimes wish that Clifford had dealt with Mr Armitage. Who? His wretched bridge partner. 
Oh, that, let us face it, is when the rot set in. Never fear, rely on me. Prevented dozens of uprisings. What do you intend to do? First sign of trouble, fire over their heads. Second sign of trouble, make an example of a sepoy. <coughs> oh, oh Paget, you scared the life. Forgive me, madam, I was wondering if you had had a chance to peruse the dinner menu. Oh, what does that matter? The usual muck, Paget. the usual muck. Very good, madam. Tickets, please. Thank you, sir. We don't usually get anyone stopping off at Cantabis this time of night. Where are you off to, then? Now, then. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow... Creeps in this petty pace from day to day, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. What? Shakespeare, sir, I thought you were quoting. Thank you, Paget. Where was I? Uh, tomorrow the disposal of the body routine, is it? Ah, yes, yes, forgive me. This confounded heat. Uh, have we decided upon a pretend victim? No. Well, how about you, Colonel? I can't. Going into Poxville Newton to get blank cartridges. Miss Parrish? I'm playing tennis with Mr Furlow. How about you, Paget? I'm afraid I must decline, sir. Touch of lumbago. Oh. Don't worry about the victim, my dear. I'll see to it. All right. Method. I, I, I've got this new suicide routine, you see. Yeah, I take the weights off an heavy clock. <coughs> Dinner I... is served. Oh. 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 Naomi, I'm in a consistently vile mood. I can't explain it. Don't fret, Clifford. You must keep calm. How can I? Can I never slacken my grip on the reins? Must I organise the murder exercise tomorrow and also lie victim? Must I strike myself with some blunt instrument, then fall into my prearranged pool of ketchup? Can I trust myself in my present mood? Not to murder myself. Clifford, you are hurting my arm. Sorry, sorry. You must relax, my dear. Your mood will break with the weather. You really think so? All we need is a good storm to clear the air. Mr. Flusher! Mr. Flusher! Oh. Sir! What is it, Paget? Come in, come in. I hesitate to mention this before breakfast, For sir. For God's sake, Paget, it's quarter to five. There's been an accident, sir. No, Paget, there has not. Not until one uh, thirty this afternoon when Mrs Barrett will be found in the ice house felled uh, by a coal shovel. Get out, Paget. But, sir, but, but... Out! Very good, sir. <sighs> I must insist. Paget, the casualty is not until this afternoon. No, no, that's as maybe, sir. But there's also been one this morning. What the devil do you mean? A dead man, sir. Who? I cannot say, sir. Paget, this is not the time for reticence. It's not gone ahead, sir. What? No, sir. Locked off by the look of it. And... Where is this unfortunate person? In the swimming pool, sir. Very well. Alert the rest of the senior staff and tell them to report to the scene of the crime. Collect the students and Miss Dina in the drawing room. Was that repellent servant implying that this creature has been, well, murdered? We well, ain't never heard of suicide by decapitation, lady. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps a shaving accident. Uh. Funny guy. But, but, but who? Who is it? A middle-aged man in a blue suit was all Paget said. Shouldn't someone send for the police? Ow! Will you stop asking damn fool questions? Listen, pals, we got to start thinking about our alibis. Hmm, must we? Isn't this one on the house? At a very rough estimate, this man has been dead for quite a long time. The garden scythe is matted with blood. I imagine that's how it was done. Beheaded and then pushed in the pool. How horribly 
clumsy. Clumsy. Yes, just the word. Well, don't look at me. Why are you all looking at me? Before we interrogate the other suspects, I suggest we run through our own alibis. Naomi. Well, offhand, I really don't know. But I couldn't have been up at such an hour. Ah, uh, what hour? Colonel? Sleeping. Creaker? You appreciate that the gaucherie of the method is strongly reminiscent of your handiwork. Cock. And you, sir. Alibi. At 12.30, I was obliged to resort to sleeping pills. I took four, enough to drug an elephant. Have I your assurance that none of you is responsible for this buffoonery? He's not my type at all. No motive. Who devil is he? Oh, yeah, you've got to have a motive. I fear that in this case, the motive will not necessarily lead us to the malefactor. In my opinion, this is either a homicidal whim among the staff, or one of our trainees has been practicing. I shall give the misdemeanant exactly 20 seconds to confess. This is a farce. Why should you suspect us? We haven't killed anyone yet. Well, sister, um... Uh, yes, all right, Mr Minelli has, but that is different. They were Americans. Maybe the victim was a Yank. Hard to tell without a head. Hard to tell with a head? Uh, not really. They, they, they have such good teeth. Mm, fair point. Anyway, your staff are the professionals. Surely it was one of you. <sighs> no one? Very well. Mr. Revere, do you have an alibi for two or three hours around dawn, or thereabouts? Certainly. I was with Chloe. I'm not going to be your alibi. Absolutely not. Chloe, how at a time like this you can be so suburban? Suburban? If you had attempted to come into my room after that rodeo last night in the games room. Rodeo? Cyril and I were playing ping pong. No! What about you, Mrs. Carlyle? An alibi? I haven't got an alibi. We haven't done alibis yet. Mr Minnelli, is there any reason why I should not suspect you of this dastardly stratagem? I was playing solitaire. Alone? Oh. And you, Mr Thurlow? I was uh, talking with Dina, uh, Miss Parrish, when uh, Mr Revere arrived and suggested table tennis. My presence felt... Superfluous, so I, so I went to bed. Darling, we could have made up a three. But ping pong. So, there we have it. None of you has an alibi. I must say that I am highly displeased. This was not on the curriculum. Paget! Paget! I've been browsing through the latest chapter, darling, but you've uh, stopped mid-sentence. Contessa Vincenza was sick at... Sick at what? Go away. Sick at the sight of the waiter's thumb in the wheel base. At Lord Peter's manly waistcoat as he pressed her to his heart and kissed her. You're a beast. Run along and play with your new friend. <sighs> I've behaved dreadfully, and I'm thoroughly ashamed of myself. Chloe, darling, do you think you'll ever be able to forgive me? <laughs> <laughs> I've been such a fool. <laughs> Chloe, do you think you'll ever be able to forgive me? <laughs> you fabulous bitch. If I catch you hanging around with that tarty blonde again, I... You what? Chop my head off. I only wanted to establish an alibi for us both so I could keep you out of this squalid business. Me? Oh, yes, of course. Most gracious, so kind, so loyal. Well, if you want to be involved in a working-class murder, wade in, wade in. <sighs> Where are you going? Why should you care? Oh, by the way... What? The Contessa Vincenza. Where was she sick at? Heart, you fool. I know the feeling. Before we begin the fourth episode of Quatermass 2, we'd like to say that, in our opinion, it is not suitable for children 
or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition. Ooh, Here, I, I was watching that. I would like everyone's full attention. But it's quite a mess. Nevertheless, I would like your advice. Do you think it advisable under the circumstances that we carry on the course as normal? Well, I don't see why not. We do have a killer in our midst. Tout ça change. But if we refuse to be rattled, the miscreant might make some elementary slip that puts us on his trail. Or hers. Indeed. In the meantime, we can attempt to ascertain their identity. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? It's like Agatha Christie. Now, how best to proceed? Uh, put notice on the board. Invite Blighter to confess it honestly. No names, no pack drill. Yeah, I bet I can make them talk. You see, I take that ordinary batch of tin tacks Creaker. and a white hot creaker. All right. All right, well, well we've got to catch the chap, haven't we? Have we? Have we, Clifford? Naturally. The pupils will expect it. Your rag, madam? Where have you been? Uh, Where is Mr. Revere? I'm afraid I haven't seen the gentleman, madam. Well, never mind. Help me get my hat boxes down from the wardrobe. You are leaving us, madam? Yes, Paget, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going back to Ned. Oh. Oh, do you need a chair? I think I could manage. You oh, clumsy oaf! That is a Norman heart knock. That did a dressing card, madam. Ah! Oh, God. It's a head. Dear me. You couldn't wear that to Ascot, now could you? Dina? What are you doing in the pool? Already? Swimming, of course. The water's not evidence, you know. No, I suppose not. Nobody seems to give a damn. There ought to be policemen milling about. Roping off the area. People taking photographs, that sort of thing. I think Mr Flush is rather annoyed. It's upset the whole course. You're supposed to have done deportment in the witness box by now. I wish I'd never come. Do you? No. Oh. Why, Bill? Well, I... Uh, <laughs> you know... Um... Could you untie this little bow at the back of my costume? Yes. Um... <laughs> I bet you've got an alibi. Why should I need one? I don't even know the man's name. Well, nobody seems to. My money's on Cyril. Why? I, I don't know. I, I, tut, I just think... Tut, tut. green-eyed monster, darling. Do you have an alibi? Of course. I'm staff. I want you to have an alibi. Somebody ought to look after you, Dina. You, you're not wicked. You, 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 you're just... Irresponsible. Oh, <laughs> you say the sweetest things. Cool. Oh, ugly bugger, isn't you? Suggest move head onto newspaper. Blood and water ruining pile. For God's sake, Paget, do as he says. Put it in the fire bucket or something. At once, sir. Does anyone recognise it? No. Nope. Clifford? No, why should I? I've never seen that severed head before in my life. All right, my dear, keep calm. I am calm, perfectly. Oh. Now then, uh, Paget, so, uh, where, where did you say you found this object? On top of Mrs Carlyle's wardrobe, sir, in a hat box. And where is Mrs Carlyle now? Resting, sir. She was quite overcome. And Mr Revere? Nowhere to be found, sir. Mrs Carlyle is quite upset. Uh, there is one more thing, sir. Yes? The object was inside a hat box, sir, but it was wrapped in a dressing gown. This dressing gown. A Roman purple. Trefoil motif of C and F. Yours, old man. Well, 
Don't you see, this is an obvious attempt to frame me. You must believe me. Going to knock people off, only have to say, no recriminations amongst friends. Oh, to hell with this! Clifford! Clifford! Clifford, what is it? Oh, God, no, me, am I going mad? That head, that face. What's the matter? I wanted to scream when I saw it, don't you see? It's Armitage, it's Armitage's head. Armitage? Your bridge partner? Yes. Oh, no! Don't you see what this means, Nermy? I must have killed him. Do you know what I think, Bill? I think you bumped off that man. No, of course I didn't. Do you swear? It's rather important to me. Dina, I solemnly swear that I've never bumped anybody off. And what's more... I never will. Never? Never. But what about your intended? The one who... No. Between ourselves, I know now that I wouldn't have been able to pull it off. I'm just not the type. Dina, will you marry me? Sarah! Where are you? <laughs> Go away. Leave me in peace. Oh, Clifford. <laughs> it's it's no use, Nermy. I'm a spent force. How can I possibly run this academy if I don't know whether or not I'm murdering people? Listen to me, my dear. Armitage's body has been laid out in the ice house. The only sensible thing in this bloody weather. I went through his pockets. So? Amongst the <laughs> dreary ephemera, driving licence expired, <laughs> ration book, return ticket to Waterloo Station, I found this. What is it? It is the soggy remnants of a letter. A letter inviting Armitage to visit you here at Dankery Manor. A letter in your hand. But this just makes things worse. I don't even remember writing the damn thing. That's because you didn't. Look at it. <gasps> Lined paper. Lined paper. Even in your strange state, my dear, you would never ever use such stationery. And look, those curly G's, like mine, but not mine, a forgery. Naomi, assemble the staff and students in the drawing room. It is time we brought this business to a conclusion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've gathered you all here because most of you are murderers. Fiends? Where is Cyril? What have you done with him? Shut up. The governor's talking. Thank you, Krieger. The plain fact is, though all of you came here with the intention of learning how to carry off your homicidal schemes, one of you rather jumped the gun. The question is, why? What about the stiff? Who is it? The body in the pool is none other than my late lamented bridge partner, Mr. Guy Armitage. The man who many months ago in town I attempted to push under a bus. <gasps> Not only that, upon his person was found a letter in my hand inviting Mr. Armitage to visit us here. Hmm. Open and shut case, brother. You did it. Of course, that would be the obvious conclusion, but supposing someone wanted to make it look like I was the killer, to sow the seeds of doubt. I sees where you was going. Equally, by cutting off the head of the corpse, the identity of the middle-aged man in the blue suit could have fitted the profile of any of the students' intended victims. Mrs. Carlyle's husband, Mr. Minnelli's mobster chums, or Mr. Thurlow's nemesis. A villain so egregious that he actually put... Let's not go into that again. But you see what I'm getting at? Whoever is behind this macabre joke wanted to set us all at odds. Who would stand to gain? Who indeed? 
Perhaps you, Mrs. Carlyle. What? Your heart has never been in this enterprise, but you knew it was too late to back out. Perhaps you thought that if you could eat away at the esprit de corps here at the manor... Oh, esprit de corps, you mean. You're mad. If I don't have the guts to kill my husband, I'm hardly likely to bump off a total stranger, am I? Or perhaps you wanted to lash out at us because of Mr. Revere's increasing fondness for Miss Parrish here. Oh, pish! Uh, what do you mean, increasing fondness? <laughs> you only played ping-pong with him, didn't you, Dina? Didn't you? Oh, Bill, you still don't see, do you? Mr. Thurlow, let us turn to you. You also, it is clear, have no stomach for assassination. You fail to apply yourself to even the most elementary of classes. Instead, you moon around after Miss Parrish like a lovesick puppy. Perhaps, seeing a figure not unlike Mr. Revere near to the swimming pool, you crept out into the night, took up the garden side. No! Or was it you, Mr. Minnelli? Me, bud. You made it clear to the creaker that America has become too hot for you. Is it too much to suggest that you feared one of your business associates had followed you here, <laughs> that you mistook Mr. Armitage for one of them and did him in? <laughs> sure, sure. Whatever you like. I took the guy's head off and then stuck it in Mrs. Carlyle's hat box. There's just one problem, wise guy. Yes? I didn't. I can tell you now. If I had whacked that guy, it would have been a clean job. The way that stiff looked, jeez. Amateur. Ah, just so. Perhaps a little too amateurish. Perhaps the person we're looking for is neither a fully-fledged member of staff nor yet an ingenue, someone who has had plenty of opportunity to observe our methods, and someone with a very pressing reason indeed to want to see us quit Dankry Manor. Uh, uh, Paget, was it you? Yes, madam, I'm afraid so. But why? Why? I couldn't dare to see the manor used like this, man. For the sake of the late Earl's memory, I felt compelled to act. I thought that if I arranged things so as you all fell out, Mr. Flash would wind up the homicide course and Dankry Manor would be allowed to rot in peace. But the man you killed, this Armitage fellow... I overheard you discussing him. It seemed to me that if I could lure him down here, dispose of him and pin the blame on Mr. Flush, then it would solve all my problems. I have picked up quite a few hints during the past 25 courses. Forged notes being one of them. Excellent work, Paget. Thank you, sir. You got my handwriting down to a T. Alas, you betrayed yourself in only three respects. The line stationary, the overly curly letter G, and the unnecessarily obsequious tone of the invitation. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. But listen, admirable Crichton. Paget, sir. Yeah, yeah. You whacked the guy. An innocent man. From what I overheard concerning Mr. Armitage's bridge game, I hardly thought him innocent. Quite right, Paget. I expect you'll be wanting my resignation now, sir. Hardly, Paget. But, but sir... Now uh... that you're as qualified as the rest of us, I intend to retain your services indefinitely. <gasps> on a reduced wage, of course. Yes, sir. Wait, wait, wait. There's still the tiny matter of my simple. What did you do to him, you monster? Did you lop off his head, too? Don't panic, Chloe, old thing. Here I am, large as life. Yes. Huh? Mr. Revere, where have you been? Ah, uh, pushing Mr. Thurlow's intended under a tube train. Should be in the late edition. What? Cyril. Top marks for initiative. Thanks. Well, it was obvious poor Bill was never going to get round to it, so I thought... But he was my victim. I would have killed him, Dina. I swear it. Oh, Cyril. Did you do it for me? Naturally. You beast! You were supposed to help me kill Ned. Oh, Chloe. I'm extremely fond of you. But? You're as rich as Croesus, yet you delight in making me beg for every penny. You humiliate me in restaurants. You deny me the barest necessities. Because you've altered your will in my favour, you imagine you're entitled to treat me as an editorial Pekingese. In short, my dear, I've had enough. I've decided to throw in my lot with Miss Parrish. 
What do you say? Will you have me, Dina? Rather. Mm. Mm. I don't mm. believe it. Mm. Must be the first time a chap hasn't got the girl mm. because he isn't a murderer. Mm. Sick transit to Gloria Swanson, old thing. Well, this is tremendous news. Paget, I think this calls for a bottle of the good champagne. Very well, Baron. Oh, my God. I've just realised something. Something horrible. And frankly, rather tacky. What is it, Clifford? Speak up. Oh, well, come on. I can't stand the suspense. Don't you see? Why, the butler did it. Oof. In Murder Every Monday, Chloe Carlyle was played by Stephanie Beecham, Minnelli by Mark Benton, and Flush by John Castle. Colonel was played by Graham Crowden, Cyril by Mark Gatiss, and Bill by Ian Hallard. Dina was played by Cal Jaggers, Mrs. Barrett by Barbara Kirby, Creaker by David Ryle, and Paget by Simon Williams. Murder Every Monday by Pamela Branch was dramatised by Mark Gatiss and directed in Wales by Kate McCall.